bet you would now But you've got to make things happen You've got to try to make things happen Or all your hopes will live by strings And it's so So this is a little bit more like it. Redilas in northern Spain. And someone else who's had the same idea is a big wave surfer, Tony Butt. Why are you uh, living in northern Spain? I suppose I did a bit of travelling around in the 1980s and then I decided I liked big waves and uncrowded surf. Um, I've actually found out that there were some good spots like that on, pretty much on my doorstep in, in the European community, which is an easy place to live. Then uh, I met my wife about five years ago, and uh, so I'm here. I work from home and use the internet. Um, and then my writing, which is uh, with the surface path mainly, and I'm just trying to, uh, about halfway through writing another book at the moment. Um, I'm a coastal oceanographer. My PhD was in uh, sediment transport in the swash zone of natural beaches, which is quite important for some of the consequences of, of global warming as well. If you're a surfer, then you're already a, uh, kind of an amateur weather predictor anyway. We've, even if we don't want to know what the waves are going to be like in the future, maybe tomorrow, we still like to know why they are the way they are today. So most surfers have got that curiosity. Surfers um, will be affected by climate change because it will change the waves they ride um, through um, sea level rise. That will that'll change the, the uh, the level of the water on the beach which means that the water will be deeper so the waves will break differently. It will also change the waves they ride because uh, one consequence of global warming is increased storminess. As the earth heats up with global warming there's energy, heat energy is being put into the equator and it's being put into the poles. But the poles are not going to heat up as much as the equator because they're going to use all the energy a lot of the energy is going to be used to melt the polar ice caps. So that means there's going to be a greater temperature differential between the poles and the equator. Because there's a temperature difference between the poles and the equator, that means that all the air in the atmosphere is, is moving around to try to um, equalize that temperature difference. That's what it wants to do, which means more weather, which means bigger storms. So the waves will become bigger and more stormy, which is maybe a good thing in some places, and, but a bad thing in others. And also, global warming is changing rainfall patterns, uh, which means heavier rain in, in some places, and particularly on the coast. If there's heavy rain, then the sewage systems can't cope, and there'll be a lot more poisonous chemicals and uh, nasty, uh, nasty stuff ending up in the sea, which will obviously affect surfers. So is climate change really happening? It is really happening. Um, about 10 years ago, the scientific community perhaps wasn't quite so convinced as they are now, but now, now I think most, most scientists are, are pretty convinced. The, the IPCC, which is the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, consists of at least 2,500 scientists worldwide, and um, they've been studying this for a number of years, and. I think they're pretty unanimous that, uh, that it is really happening. So if it is happening, is it our fault? Well, this is the really important issue. Is it our fault? And, and the IPCC, their latest report uh, this year states that uh, there's at least a 90% chance that the major cause of climate change is man-made emissions of 
greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Yeah, it's our fault, it seems to be our fault, so what we can do about it is consume less. If you want to travel, maybe the, the kind of short haul travelling and just, just going all over the place for one swell is a little bit, trying to be a bit too ambitious or a little bit, a little bit selfish really. Maybe go back to the sort of longer trips, planned longer trips on a low budget and uh, um, I don't know, if you're on a low budget then you tend to consume less anyway and you and you automatically tend to burn less hydrocarbons um, and also apart from that just in your daily surfing uh, near where you live don't just drive around checking spot after spot use things like the internet and mobile telephones you know phone up your mates and see if they've already checked some spot or really try to study the charts and make a decision as to which place is working before you head off in that direction